There is a reason for ER's emphasis on reality. I think that the audiences have um, become much more sophisticated in watching like reality TV shows like Rescue 911 and things like that. So that they know. Lance Gentile is the ultimate example in ER reality. As ER's technical advisor, this practicing physician not only sees that the surgical procedures are accurate, he also makes sure that cast members toss off medical jargon like real doctors. Cross table C spine. Get me a uh, picture of the left femur. Call ortho. Tell him to get down here. What else you got for me? We made that choice right from the beginning that the technical jargon was going to just flow out of these doctors, and we weren't going to make a huge amount of effort to explain it to the audience because doctors don't explain what they're saying to each other. Yet try to make it understandable so that the general audience will know at least what's going on. Mastering the medical lingo was certainly a unique challenge for the cast members. One day I had to say, all right, I have to take a deep breath in this one. 65-year-old male with severe peripheral vascular disease manifested by claudication of the left calf. He's 10 days post-op for Mercy General after having an aorta bifemoral bypass. Normal post-operative course till about six hours ago and he began to experience the gradual onset of lower left quadrant pain without palliative or provoking factors. Noah nailed that tongue twister in two takes. But his fellow actors haven't always been as adept. It's a mystery the first time, but um, you wake up this part of your brain that you don't normally use, and you start using it. And you can you can memorize the lines, you can deal with the technical jargon, and it gets, it gets a little easier as it goes on. But I mean, it's still challenging. To meet that challenge, the cast members had to do their homework. I uh, went to uh, the supermarket and, and bought a bunch of chickens and practiced in my house, sewing up the chickens. I went into UCLA emergency room, and a guy was being intubated, and I, I lost it. I fainted. <laughs> the end result of all the research and attention to detail is a television show that resonates with real-life ER personnel. I think it's uh, pretty realistic. I think that there is mm, much more emotion and much more... Um, adrenaline and much more power in a really emergency room but for the most part I think they do a pretty good job. Of the medical shows that I've seen it's the most realistic one to date um, and I approve of it because I think it does help show the community what goes on in emergency departments. Back on the ER set Juliana Margulies is winding up her tour. This is the main lobby elevators the doors actually open and close however the elevator doesn't go up and down now you come back out to the exterior this is what the outside of the hospital looks like and that is the set of er of course it's easy to get around this seven hundred thousand dollar set when it's empty but when we return, we'll show you the single piece of equipment that has the cast of ER watching where they step. It's where I think they draw fluid out of the spinal, out of the spinal canal. It's not a good, it's, you don't want to do it, you don't want to have it done to you. It's bad. Lumbar puncture, bad. If you're at the doctor's and he says lumbar puncture, you go, bad. That's bad. <laughs> Welcome back to the behind-the-scenes look at ER. Ready and action! Action, motion, and speed. These are the vital statistics in every episode of ER. To capture that energetic style, the production relies on a special piece of equipment. This is your basic uh, steady cam. Uh, it, there's three main parts. This piece in particular is vest, and it kind of just goes on. It's a lot of Velcro adjustments and you know different heights and for different people. Um, the second part is the arm, and it's uh, a copy of a human arm for all intents and purposes. I mean, this is your shoulder, bicep, elbow, forearm. You mount the arm to the steady cam vest, and it's. Uh, very much the same theory as driving with a cup of coffee. You hit a pretty nasty bump and it'll still keep everything kind of level. Uh, obviously the effect of it is a very important integral part of this show. 
it enables you to move in places where you couldn't ordinarily move to without cutting. It's really uh, driven by the speed and the use of the steady cam to portray that speed. Because of its versatility, the steady cam has been responsible for shaping the show's identity. It's not like they've invented anything, but they're using it, and they're using it in a way that other TV shows aren't, makes ER immediately identifiable. I mean, I think they deserve a, a lot of credit for that. Sometimes we're doing four or five page scenes without a cut, and the steady cam enables us to do that. It gives us that fast motion and great fluidity. The audience has embraced ER's feverish pace, but to achieve the look, the doctor has prescribed a lot of practice and patience. It requires such a combination of the actors being really prepared and then integrating it with the cameraman and the sound people. And room man running into equipment and, you know, the steady cam operator running into extras. It's, it's quite an involved process. We really bang into each other all the time. Um, cameras bang into each other all the time. I, I direct most of his background business. It's called crosses. There's a lot of crosses in action. And, and, and the, the principals consider that I, I, I send the people to kind of get in their way and, and interfere with them, you see. And as a result, they, they, they subtly let me know every now and then that, that that's how they view things. It is, after all, part of my job. I mean, I've instructed no one to bump into me, and I think that they've pretty well honored that. So if you, like, mess up a little line at the end, that means the 400 people before you in this one shot scene are, like, pretty, pretty pissed off. We're getting better at it. It's becoming much more fluid, I think, as, as the time goes by. That's good news to Felix Alcala. Although he's directed episodes of NYPD Blue, this is his first shot at ER. You have to do a lot of stuff very quickly and the pacing's really different. And uh, the big problem for me is trying to, to make sure everybody's in the right spot at the right time for the right moment. What I try to do here is make events happen. When you see an event and you create the event, then you just try to capture it. Alcala's vision and fast-paced style keeps the ER staff on their toes. He's great. Every episode's different, though. This one's, um, not all trauma, 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 trauma. The fact that it took us 15 minutes to do that scene, whereas sometimes it would have taken other directors 45 minutes to an hour. You gotta, you gotta like that. He has a very, uh, very interesting energy. Um, you know, he brings in his music. I mean, you can hear music playing in the background. That's, that's Felix's own personal stamp, you know. It's the first time I've ever worked with a director who's played music in between takes. But it seems to be really good. It's, uh, it creates this a really nice sort of mellow energy that everybody gets into. I really just sort of have fun and relax as the crew sort of... just changes the day for him, because it's tough. It's a lot of hard work, and we're here a lot of hours. This is something. Just keep everybody happy. And I need it for me, so... We have couple hundred CDs, so we just play all kinds of stuff. Keeping everyone happy is hard enough, but the true test is balancing artistic expression and the eight-day deadline. Okay, pictures up and back to number one, please. It's never everything that you want, and so you try to find that line where you're you're doing work that you're proud of, and yet you can still show up for your air dates. But I don't think that's unique to this show. I think that's always uh, uh, a factor in, in doing any uh, television show where you're doing, you know, basically an hour of film in eight days or less. Hopefully the compromises you make are not as painful because you're hopefully prepared. Day five falls on a Friday, and the ER residents are definitely thankful. Friday's always good, you know, the weekend. Downtime, relax. We're starting today Friday at 8.30, so we'll all be home by 9, 9.30 p.m., which is, you know, pretty unusual for Friday night. By the time the weekend comes, it's just what the doctor ordered and the ER cast and crew know how to recuperate. Nap. Sleep. <laughs> Hang out. Up home, see my kids and family. Come Saturday, I wake up and I feel like I was hit by Mac truck and I stay in bed. Now I have no private life, but I have lots of fun at work. There's more from the life of any party, George Clooney, on the way. But first... Hey, this is Eric Lassell from ER. When E returns, you'll see why we're playing ping pong. And if we really know what we're doing, 